So last time we looked at uh, the database concepts and some of the different pieces of software you can use to manage a database. Today we're going to look at the database management system and the structure of relational databases. First of all, a bit of a history lesson for you all. In bygone years, companies and businesses will, might have departments such as sales, which would go out and try and sell the company's product to customers, might have accounts department, which would try and get the money off those customers for the products, and you might have a training department that go and train the customers on the products that were sold. The sales department would store its own data uh, in its sales file. The accounts department would have its own store of data, as would the training department. These might be stored in paper records in a filing cabinet or in an electronic database on a computer. But either way, the same problem arose in that we'd have something called data duplication. The sales department would be storing information about customers. The accounts department would be storing uh, information about customers, the same customers, and probably the same customer names and addresses, telephone numbers, etc. And the training department as well would still be uh, storing its own version of that data. So three copies of the same data. Um, some departments might update records, some might not, so there'd be some data inconsistency. And all of this meant more effort, uh, more time spent by the company updating the same information three times and would mean more storage space, whether that's physical storage space in filing cabinets or electronic storage space on computers. So, to combat this, companies would have a central company database with just one list of customers, names and addresses, telephone numbers, etc., which all departments would access. This, however, brought about security issues. So if the sales department wanted to do something with um, a particular customer's data and the accounts department wanted to do something with that same um, customer's data, we might get problems. This is why we have something called the DBMS, the Database Management System. The DBMS um, acts as a layer between different companies' programs, or sorry, different departments' programs, and the central company database. The DBMS is also known as Program Data Independence. The DBMS we might be more, most familiar with might be Microsoft Access, and here's some of the features of a DBMS. We know that it separates programs from a database and allows multiple programs to use the same database at the same time. It manages access to users, so it will allow some users access to some data, but not to others. And it allows users and different programs to edit and maintain records in the database. It has to manage access to database record, records, and what we mean by that is what we said before, where one program or one user might be trying to access um, a particular record or update, say, a customer's name, at the same time that another program or another user is trying to do the same thing. So what it will do is it will lock that particular record whilst the first person is updating it so that the second person can't do it at that time. It provides correct views of data to users, allows interrogation, such as querying, reporting, and searching. It might automatically back up data. And it facilitates what we call a relational database structure, which we're going to talk a little bit more about now. To understand the relational database structure, we need to know what a flat file database is. And a flat file database is where all of the data in a database is stored in one table or entity as we might know it, one table of data. So you could st store a flat file database in Excel. So this is a database that is stored in Excel, just one table. You can store a flat file database in Microsoft Access as well, but this is where this problem of what we call data redundancy appears. If we look closely at this particular example, We've got a, a list of students, their genders, phone numbers, and extra information about various things. We've got their tutor group as well. Now we can see lots of 
these students are in the 9DP tutor group, some of them are in the 9AM tutor group, some of them are in the 9DV tutor group. Where we've got anybody in the 9DP tutor group, we can see that their tutor is Dan Pick and their room is D24. But that information is repeated time after time, many times within this table. We can see it closer there. What this leads to is more entry time. It takes longer to enter that data because we could just enter 9DP, but we've got to enter the teacher's name and room as well. There's more chances of typing mistakes whilst doing that. This all takes up more storage space. So um, when we're thinking about 20 records, it might not make a lot of difference to the size of a computer file and some server storage space. But if we're talking hundreds of thousands, millions, billions of records, it certainly makes a big difference. Another key thing is, and a bad thing about flat file databases, are uh, that um, if, say, Dan Pick's uh, room was to change to D22, say, then we'd have to go and change each individual record. A much better way of working is where we have that original data, but just the tutor group stored in one table. We have a separate table that stores the, de the detail about each tutor group. So if Dan Pick's room does change, then we only need to change it once. And what happens in a relational database is that a link is made between um, one table and the other. And the DBMS will handle that for you. Basically says that this field in the main table is what we know as a foreign key. And that relates to what is known as a primary key in the other table. So it knows that those two things are linked. So if it needs to know who Harry Potter's tutor is, it can follow the link and find out that it is Dan Pick and they are based in D24.